Hey, what's going on, everybody? Tom Kelly here from Clean Cut Audio. Today, I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite plugins of all time. It is the Vocal Rider plugin by Waves. Now, in any podcast, dynamics play a very important role. You want that dynamic range to be not zero, but as low as humanly possible. The reason being... Um, People have dynamics naturally in their voice, and that's great. It's human. It's natural. But when you're listening to a podcast, what you have to keep in mind is that many people listen when they're on the go, when they're in their car on the way to work, when they're running on the treadmill at the gym, when they're you know slaving over boiling water in the kitchen listening through their Amazon Echo. People are always listening, listening in less than ideal conditions. Not everyone is in their podcasting studio with sound conditioning on the walls. The neighbors are out of town for the weekend. Everything's quiet. Dynamics don't matter because your noise floor is so low that you can hear everything. People aren't in those conditions. The noise floor is high, so dynamics in the podcast need to be consistent. If you've ever been in your car listening to something and you're constantly, uh, they call it riding the fader, turning the volume up and down because parts get really loud and really quiet, that's exactly what we're going to be mitigating today with Vocal Rider by Waves. Now let's take a look at this Pro Tool session that I have here. I made a quick little sample file here that I'll play for you now. Turn all my plugins off. Except my meter here. Let's hit reset and take a listen. Hey, Tom Kelly here. I am recording a quick little example of kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like. I know the co-host of my podcast, the Reminiscent Podcast, is very dynamic. And his voice goes up and down a lot. And a part of me doesn't understand how a human can be that dynamic. But it is my job to control that situation. All right, so the dynamic range in that little sample is 15, 16 loofs. Now, I know that with decibels, the loudness doubles every six decibels, and it's exponential. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, what the math with the loofs is, but 16 is too much. When I put out my episodes, I aim for three. And again, that's just so you're not constantly turning the volume up and down. You don't want that. That's not a good listener experience. So what I did here, I added Vocal Rider. I'll explain it a little more as as we go forward here. But let's just listen to the difference. Look at the meter again. I'll hit reset on that. Hey, Tom Kelly here. I am recording a quick little example of kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like. I know the co-host of my podcast, the Reminiscent Podcast, is very dynamic. And his voice goes up and down a lot. And... A part of me doesn't understand how a human can be that dynamic, but it is my job to control that situation. So that was a little better. It's still not perfect, but you can see the range decreased to only 10 lifts. That's great. Uh, If it goes by that principle in decibels, that's six off, twice as loud. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm not the acoustician or the decibel scientist here. But... You could hear there was a huge difference, especially in this middle portion, where you could see the fader on Vocal Rider was pumping up to about 12 decibels there. And that's amazing. That's that's what we want. Uh, I mean, typically the speaker isn't that dynamic to begin with, but we can't all be that lucky. So, going to kind of run through the controls with you a little bit here. Some people look at this, at this plugin and think it's really daunting. They think it's too difficult, and then they give up, and they don't realize that it's actually very, very simple. I look at two things. I look at range, and I look at target. Now, I don't usually speak that dynamically, as you can tell right now, but you can see that this is the quiet portion, and then average is like somewhere in here. So I'm going to play this back, and I'm going to set my target to that average range. That's where you, you want. You want everything to be a nice, even average. So we're going to listen to this. You're going to see a yellow bar come up, and then we'll just slam that little button there to the middle of that of that average. Hey, Tom Kelly here. I am recording a quick little example of... So it's already there. I already had this set beforehand. Whoops. And the range is how much you're going to allow Vocal Rider to automate your audio if it'll boost by a certain amount or cut by a certain amount now i never have it cut anything because that's what my compressor is for that's next in my signal chain so i only have it boosting 
and I'll have it boost by, I go from zero, so it's doing no work at all, or it'll boost by 12 decibels. Now that's a lot because there's a huge portion of this that's very quiet. So watch it again, and what you'll see is when the yellow bar in the target dips below that center red line there, the the fader, the rider there, is going to boost to try to get it back up to that medium point there. And I have the attack on fast, um, slow, adds like a little bit of a pumping. People say the same with the fast, but when you combine that with the compressor, it all evens out, so nothing to worry about. So watch again now that we kind of know what's going on. Watch the fader in the middle there slowly creep up as the volume ducks down. Hey, Tom Kelly here. I am recording a quick little example of kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like. I know the co-host of my podcast, the Reminiscent Podcast, is very dynamic, and his voice goes up and down a lot, and a part of me doesn't understand how a human can be that dynamic, but it is my job to control that situation. All right, so that kind of gives you a better view of what's going on. I'm going to physically show you the output of the waveform here. So I'm sending the signal pre-fader so that uh, 1 plus 1.4 decibels doesn't matter. It's sending bus 7. I'm going to zero that out to this track, which I'll record. So what we're going to be hearing is the raw track with only vocal rider adjusting, automating that volume. Hey, Tom Kelly here. I am recording a quick little example of kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like. I know the co-host of my podcast, the Reminiscent Podcast, is very dynamic, and his voice goes up and down a lot, and a part of me doesn't understand how a human can be that dynamic, but it is my job to control that situation. All right, so already we can see the waveform, which is the visual representation of the loudness of this track or the gain of this track. It's much more even. And that's without even compressing. This is just volume automation that's happening in real time through the Vocal Rider plugin. So you can see the very quietest portion right here is much closer to this louder average portion at the beginning. And uh, let's see if I can kind of, yeah, put them over each other. And you can see the darker portion in the middle is before, the lighter is after. Some parts weren't affected because Vocal Rider didn't need to boost those. And some parts were increased significantly there. So one more feature of Vocal Rider is actually printing automation. And I don't typically do this in my shows because I don't I don't really feel like I need to because I have my compressor dialed in perfectly to catch what Vocal Rider doesn't. The two really work well together. But I'm going to show you here the automation that it can write. So I already have vocal rider the rider fader set up here and what we'll do is we're going to change this to right and then down here on vocal rider you also want to change that to right and watch what happens the the fader is going to be automating that up and down so let's take hey a look. tom kelly here i am recording a quick little example of kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like i know the co-host of my podcast the reminiscent podcast is very dynamic and his voice goes up and down a lot and a part of me doesn't understand how a human can be that dynamic, but it is my job to control that situation. All right, so that actually wrote the automation here. And what we're going to do is we're going to allow Vocal Rider to not be writing anymore. So we're going to read that both on the track and within the app itself, the plugin itself. And you'll see this fader will be moving in correlation to its automation here of kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like. I know the co-host of my podcast, the Reminiscent Podcast, is very dynamic. And now what makes this so powerful is that if you think Vocal Rider missed something, didn't do something perfectly, if you don't want it to go down and back up, you just want it to stay consistent, what we can actually do here is take our little, little hand tool there, or if you want, you can take a pen, and you can write in the automation that you want. Now let's write a straight line. That's not fair. So if you just want it to stay up there, uh, if for some reason you want it to dip down real fast, you can do that. I don't think you'd want to, but now Vocal Rider will read your instructions from that automation. So watch the fader and then watch these lines here. 
kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like. I know the co-host of my podcast, the Reminiscent Podcast, is very dynamic. So obviously you don't want to do that. That doesn't sound good, but that's a feature of it. So if you want to get really picky and get in there with your pen tool and write some automation, that's really, really great. You can do that. So now let's undo all of this. I'm actually just going to undo all that automation, turn it off. And I want to show you the importance of dynamics because again, like I said, we're not all going to be listening in our sound condition studios that were built for podcast production and podcast listening. Uh, God forbid you're driving in a car, it's raining outside and um, it's dangerous enough. You want to be paying attention to the road, probably should turn the podcast off, but you definitely don't want to be riding that fader, the volume button. So let's listen to this back without vocal rider in a car in the rain. Hey, Tom Kelly here. I am recording a quick little example of kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like. I'm the co-host of my podcast. This podcast is very dynamic, and his voice goes up and down a lot, and a part of me doesn't understand how a human can be that dynamic. All right, so you kind of lost entirely what I was saying. Now, without the rain there, you can kind of make it out. It would sound like I know the co-host of my podcast. But again, that's with no noise floor at all. So let's throw a vocal writer in there. Sound like I know the co host of my podcast. This podcast is very dynamic. And again, you know, I'll just turn it up because it's going to be louder. Kind of what a dynamic speaker would sound like. I know the co host of my podcast. This podcast is very dynamic and his voice goes up and down a lot. So you can hear it's these dynamics are much more important when you have a high noise floor, which is how most people are listening. So you can really use Vocal Rider to make your workflow much more efficient. I edit four or five podcasts a day, six days a week. I don't have time to go through every hour long episode and hand write all this automation in. So I use vocal rider, which it was on sale for $29 at the time to really help me out. It does a lot of the heavy lifting with my dynamics. And when I pair it with the API 2500 compressor, I never need to touch anything. Uh, all I do is I set that target to try to find the average. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a little bit of a cold here. I set that average and just roll with it, man. It takes care of the rest. This is the biggest the biggest time saver. It's the most important tool in my signal chain. And I'm really grateful that it exists. I don't know what I did before without it. Probably just had podcasts that people couldn't hear all the time, which is really sad. But you can use that to your advantage. It's Typically on the Wave Store for $69. I'll put a link below in the description for you to grab it. Uh, you can wait for it to go on sale, but honestly, if this plugin were $500, I would still buy it in a second because it is that useful. And if you're a proper podcast producer, editor, engineer, whatever you want to call yourself, you're making really good money, that $29 will pay for itself in 15 minutes. All right. Some people say they spend hours automating their episodes. You're losing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars by not automating this process with Vocal Rider. I'm not paid by Waves to say that. If you do buy it with the link below, I think they send me like 30 cents. It is an affiliate link, but... I use this plugin in every single episode that I do, especially with my co-host because he is the most dynamic speaker I've ever heard. What is with you, Pat? So thank you for checking it out. If you have any questions, email me, tom at cleancutaudio.com. I hope I explained this plugin well enough and how you can use it in your own podcast productions. It'll save you so much time, so much money. It is worth its weight in gold. Thank you so much. See you later.